at the CubeWise conference in, uh, <coughs> in Sydney at the Hilton. It's my great pleasure to be talking to the inventor of PM1, the great Manny Perez. Hello, Manny. Hi. Uh, what I want to talk to you about is, is the invention of it and to draw, I guess, some general lessons from what you did for other innovators right. out there. How you, so you're working at Exxon, 1980, early 1980s. Right. When did you first think, hang on, there might be a better way of doing things? Well, uh, <laughs> actually, it was someone else that came up with the idea of uh, building a, uh, a tool. At that time, there was no PC uh, and uh, to run on PSO, which was the time sharing uh, capability that IBM provided. Yeah. And, uh, <coughs> uh, and this would be able to replace a system that they were running on IMS, which is a very expensive to run mainframe system. And was it clumsy? Was it not as user friendly it as it could have been? It was, it was functional. Yeah. It, it did the job. Uh, now, you have to remember at those times, uh, we were talking about paper spreadsheets. Yes. And, uh, and uh, desk calculators. Uh, there was no spreadsheet, there was no PC, uh, <coughs> and so uh, the idea was to have something that was interactive and that did uh, help put together a plan. This was for oil supply and demand. Uh, <coughs> and so, you know, when I took a uh, look at it and I looked at the dimensionality and the need to consolidate and so on, uh, it was clear to me that the relational database couldn't do it. Uh, so I took a different approach uh, that was memory based. Yeah, so the first part of innovation is, is seeing an opportunity, seeing right. something that isn't working there perfectly and you, and you saw that. Right. And then there's the next bit, which is a lot of hard work, probably trying, failing, putting something together that looks like it might work. That took a well, while, well yeah? Well, it, it, uh, the, the important thing I think is the inspiration and the clarity of what you're trying to to build the problem that you're trying to solve, and and then you take a first uh, first uh, approach to it, a first approximation, and then it's uh, you know hopefully that approximation and that concept is sound, and then you start uh, through a refining uh, process where you start uh, adding more capability, uh, adding more power, as uh, as technology becomes available, you need to cons uh, incorporate it into the, into the product. So for example, one of the first things that came to the picture, uh, sort of coincidentally, was the, uh, was the personal computer and the spreadsheet. So it was clear that the spreadsheet was the ideal uh, interface to this multidimensional database. Yeah. So from the very beginning, that ex Excel now Excel is the spreadsheet back then. I don't think it even existed. Uh, and did you have that point that many innovators go through where they're excited about the idea and they work on it and then there's that moment where you just think it's all turned to rubbish and it's not going to work and it's too hard. And if you did have that moment or moments, how did you get no, through I, them? I, I, I never had any, any doubts about wow. the... the uh, the thing that gave me some doubt uh, uh, was the, the percent acceptance, the percent of people that actually understood the product. And, and that's a mystery to, to me to this day. Uh, my biggest concern initially was that the idea was so obvious that people were going to copy it. Right. And, and, uh, but in fact, there was a low take up initially. Uh, there was a low uh, uptake. For quite a long time, right? Uh, yeah, well, uh, all these years. Yeah. Did uh, you become bitter and hateful then? or? Uh, no. Good. No, I, uh, I would. I mean, I, I, had, I had moments of despair, yeah. but, but very few. I, I remember one day uh, looking out the window and, and wondering if I had made uh, uh, the right decision, leaving my, my secure job in a big corporation. Yes. Uh, but that that lasted uh, a very few minutes. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, be, because sometimes you need to gauge your own success by how happy you are with the product, rather than what other people think. Well, 
actually, actually, it was other people that gave me that assurance. And how did that happen? Well, uh, in, in the sense that uh, that small percentage of people that understood it and adopted it just went totally crazy over it. Yeah. And they thought it was the, you know, the best thing in the, on the planet. So even though the market was uh, hard to, uh, to penetrate and very slow to penetrate, there was no question that I had you know, something of value. And at the same time, the fact that it had a certain intellectual impenetrability yeah. <laughs> kind of <laughs> kept the, the- Other people away. Yeah, mm. exactly. And, and am I right in thinking that some of the improvements you made after the launch were driven by customer feedback yeah, oh and, that, and that you were possibly pro possibly leading leading there that whole movement there, there were bit. two there were two uh, forces for change one was uh, the user demand which was ever more complex and more you know people tried to do bigger and bigger things and the other one was the technology so initially uh, the concept was, that you had a center on your on your PC desktop PC. You had a uh, a database that was a multidimensional cube kind of thing, and you had multiple spreadsheets that would communicate through that through that cube, and that gave you a lot of uh, flexibility and a lot of reliability and so on. So uh, right at that time, the notion of a local area network uh, came to be. You have, I mean, you have to understand that there was not even a PC when the first yeah, one no, idea. it's amazing. So then, uh, a few li years later, the PC started getting connected, and and we uh, we went uh, uh, PC users went from what was called sneaker net, where they would pass floppy disks around, to having a local area network. So it was very natural then that the database would reside in the in the uh, server of the local area network and pe different people now could interact with the database. Mm, mm. So that was another stage. There was a, a, a multiple stages, multiple uh, enhancements having to do, for example, with security, yeah. uh, with uh, handling bigger dimensions and so on, even though uh, I, from the get-go, the, the, the model, the concept was very scalable. Uh, it had to be implemented mm. as the technology became available. So we're talking a lot about innovation at the conference today. And, and, and three things that leap out to me from your, your story is, is, is almost principles of innovation. Look for problems. Secondly, there's a lot of little incremental work once you have the big idea of gradually getting it better and getting right. it better. Third one is being persistent. If overnight success doesn't happen, just right. keep at it. Fourth one, and everyone talks about these days, but they weren't talking about it back when you were doing it, is listen to your customers and end oh users yes. and use that to make your, your, your product better, harvest, if you yeah. like, their, their thoughts. What other advice or lessons would you well, have for, in, for innovators I, I starting would, out? I would, uh, uh, particularly in this business, uh, I think a very key uh, element is keep it simple. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think it's very important to reduce things down to, to a minimalist design. Which is pretty hard with what you're doing. It's, it's very hard in everything. Yeah. It, it's, it, it's very hard to do. Uh, so there, there has to be, you have to have a certain almost gut, gut aversion to complexity and, and you know, have a, almost like a, like a, a, t a taste Yes. So things have to, you know, when they're not right, when they're complicated, you you become very uncomfortable with that, and then you look for a way to simplify Th that's it. That's actually a great principle, isn't it? A lot of innovation is about making complex things simple. So, I mean, complex things for end users. Sometimes to make right. it simple for them, you have to make it more complicated deep it down, don't you? Absolutely. Yeah. In, in order for now to uh, provide something that performs well, uh, and is scalable and is reliable and all that, there is a lot behind the scenes that is very complex. And there, uh, there you're not concerned about complexity, you're concerned about, uh, about performance yeah. and scalability. 
uh, but the what the user sees has to be kept yeah. to its minimum. Yeah. Okay, let me end with a more personal question. We've talked a lot about the business benefits of right. innovation and how how it happens, but what is being the inventor of TM1, coming to this conference, it's all about something that you invented. What's it given you on a personal level? Does it make it you walk a little bit taller in the world? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of very, uh, what's the word uh, I'm looking for? Uh, a humble. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a, a kind of kind of person perhaps it's false modesty but uh, I mean I, I find it very uh, very uh, satisfying that people are getting value mm. and when people tell me that you know that uh, TM1 has changed their lives and given them a, a career and all that uh, I mean how how could that not be yeah not be satisfying uh, but but on the other hand, I I approach it with a bit of discomfort, uh, right? If, if you know what I mean. Y you don't want to be a rock star. I don't want to be. A, <laughs> I don't want. I I just don't. You know, well, it was I lovely to talk to you, thing. and congratulations. I know a lot of people are really thrilled All to right. have you. So thanks for coming. Thank you.